Hi everyone, I'm Palashi and I'm with my co-author Ram to present our work on Cast Capital on Twitter. We started with the question of how does caste operate among Indian politicians on Twitter. Caste is critical for winning elections in India. The Indian constitution affords reservation of seats within both houses of the parliament for lower caste candidates. The electoral process has been a key tool for the marginalized sections of the society to participate in governance. But data also shows a form of ghettoization of lower caste candidates where they're solely elected in reserved constituency constituencies. These tokenistic representations of a few lower caste members bolsters the idea that identity politics of caste is an issue of lower castes and not of upper castes. This rhetoric has led to upper castes appearing casteless while benefiting from historically accrued caste capital as social capital. The rhetoric of castelessness among upper caste Indians has also meant that upper caste politicians tend to eschew caste publicly in the interest of appearing secular in their position. This renders caste relations or dynamics more implicit than explicit. While politicians might not always make casteist comments on Twitter, a deeper examination into the implicit behavior of politicians is necessary to understand how caste operates among them. Social media has become the primary means of communication for politicians around the world. It allows politicians to circumvent scrutiny of professional journalists and draw mainstream media coverage to their social media activity. There's enough work to show how political communication on Twitter is managed by IT cells of a party. For example, institutionalized social media management in BJP, the ruling party of India, closely manages how many followers a candidate should have to get a ticket, what messages are retweeted through its networks, as well as how individual politicians present themselves online, making the tweets and the retweets highly performative. But what about things that lurk behind these well-oiled machines? The question before us was how do we study something like caste when it's implicit? We found the answer in thinking about caste as a networked phenomena. We studied social networks of politicians to understand caste in interpersonal relations on Twitter. Anthropologists and economists have showed how informal social networks of caste strongly affect every aspect of the Indian political economy. But there are few and empirical few empirical and formal studies of caste networks and the kind of social capital it enables on social media. We study social media capital and its relationship with caste on Twitter. By mapping caste capital through networks, we also hope to dispel the myth of castelessness of upper castes online. Members of parliament are generally mindful of what kinds of language and signaling they should use about their caste or affiliation to other caste groups. They also have staffers who maintain their social media. However, relations with politicians from other castes can manifest in the form of unconscious bias and can be more evident from a relatively less conspicuous activity on Twitter, like following someone. We study the influence of caste on structural properties of the follow network to capture implicit forms of inclusion and exclusion. Thanks for the context and background, Kalashi. We refer to the SPINPER database of the Vedi Center for Political Data to get the past information. So their data comes from an extensive fieldwork across the country. We classified politicians into six categories, as you see on the table on the right. We also break down the upper caste and challenge the rhetoric of castelessness among upper caste MPs. Our study compares networks of BJP and non BJP MPs, and we control for several conformers in our analysis. In our analysis to study social capital, we focus on three structural properties of a network, age rank centrality, to measure how central or important a politician is in the network, betweenness to measure the bridging ability, and finally reciprocity to compare how many connections in the network are reciprocal versus one-sided. The first one that we studied was centrality. So in this slide, the left and right figure shows the centrality distribution of BJP and non-BJP MPs respectively. These simple distribution charts gave us several interesting insights. I will discuss a couple of them here. The centralities of all except the Brahmins appear by mode with a shorter right peak. That is, there are very few MPs within most castes with very high centralities. This is especially stark within non-BJP. If you see the chart on the right, the right peaks 
of each line graph corresponding to different cast or late in which not parasitic frequency of dominance in both BJP and non BJP. Their distribution looks mostly uniform, and an average seems to have higher centrality than other cast. Used permutation based methods to do a pairwise comparison of the averages and overall found that Brahmins indeed hold more advantageous structural positions on average, whereas scheduled castes and scheduled tribes are placed at a significant disadvantage when they are not followed by many as having the least control over the information they consume or broadcast. With an explosive occupying such advantages position in the network, this leads into successful propagation as measured by the frequency at which their tweets are getting retweeted. Figure here shows the correlation between following the x-axis and the retweets they get on the y-axis. We group six cast into two, uh, lower and upper, for statistical reasons. Yet here too, the distinction between BJP and non-BJP becomes very clear. The right figure shows that more influential MPs in BJP with respect to following receive higher retweets on average. This aligns with prior studies that have shown that ruling BJP is more effective in promoting itself and in electing coordinated political message. In contrast, non-BJP MPs are heterogeneous with less coordination, and we don't see a correlation as strong as that in BJP. I'll briefly discuss the other two structural properties we studied. The first one was betweenness. It measures the abridging behavior of nodes, and the greater the value of betweenness for an MP, the more people in the network depend on them to make connections with other MPs. And the betweenness of different tasks would shed light on the extent of disruption that can be caused by removing MPs of particular tasks in the communication between different parts of the network. Mm -hmm. For the integrating the information of direction of the connections showed us that upper and lower cast clearly differed in how they bridge different MPs in a network. For instance, in the case of upper cast MPs within BJP, those with high betweenness had main inward connections and less outward connections. Whereas in the case of lower cast, it was exactly the opposite. Overall, this implies that cast MPs provide information that is common to different categories of nodes in the network. And slow cast MPs mostly rely on outgoing connections to other MPs to gain a stronger foothold in the MPs to their influence. The final property that we studied was reciprocity. As with the other two properties, here too we found that within both BJP and non-BJP, Brahmins have a significant advantage over lower cast MPs in terms of getting average reciprocal followings from other MPs in the network. Similarly, upper cast non-Brahmins too Though they formed only 20% of non-BJP MPs, they still had an advantage over others in terms of reciprocal ways. So why does our study in math show that no caste representation in electoral politics does not translate into social capital within the network of parliamentarians? We see a manifestation of hidden social media capital that is deeply intertwined with caste-based hierarchy in the world of social computing. And finally, our works make a methodological intervention in social computing and inequality, boost the study of social networks. And further studies can use similar methodologies to shed light on social media capital and past in other institutions of consequence like media, academia, and corporations. Thanks for listening.